New multi-viewer magic from Ensemble Designs. Stunning detail and simple setup. Easy, click-to-fill configuration for your Mac, PC, or iPad. The new Avenue Multiviewer from Ensemble Designs. Hi, I'm Mike Gratticelli with Broadcast Engineering Online. Here today with Mark Hayden. He's Vice President of Engineering and IT at MLB Network. Yes, hey, Mark. Thanks oh, for coming. You're Appreciate very it. welcome. No problem. We're here at NEB and discussing different types of, of productions and what it really takes to do a, a network like you guys have. I mean, first of all, the kind of content you're producing, give us some numbers as far as, you know, in a given period, maybe a month or six months. Yeah, what I mean, if you really you think about out? it, there's 162 baseball games per year times 30 teams, so divide that in half, it's 15. So you got 162 four-hour games, and we'll take dirty feeds from both production trucks, we'll take the clean feeds from the production trucks, we'll try to capture as much content as we can, including radio calls, uh, alternate language versions. Sure. So from a versioning standpoint, we can have four or six different versions of a game. So wow. the metadata will link them all together. Sure. So if you point to the game, you have your different flavors. We probably pull in to our sands about 3,000 hours a week wow. in season. Yeah. Wow. So that mean, obviously that means lots of storage, I'm thinking. Is there any way to kind of minimize the, the cost of storage, so to speak? You know, yeah. how, how can you economize, in other words? I know you don't throw anything out. No, we don't. In fact, we're, we're tasked also with the archive, the visual history of baseball, right. with Major League Baseball productions. So True. by the time we're done, and they're, they're doing all their ingest off tape, we'll be at a probably 200 and something thousand hours wow. of, of content. We still have some legacy stuff we've got to get through, uh, a robotic system that we set up for, for productions. Yep. But we kind of work at it hierarchically. It's not true HSM. You've okay. got your, your online, your near line, and then your, your tape library. Okay. We're currently on LTO 4, probably going to LTO 6 or 7 down the road, and, and the, the, the key thing for us is partial file restore. In other words, I can only keep sure. maybe two to four days worth of games easily accessible, but to the end user who wants to go grab something, a Ricky Henderson highlight from years ago, they could search the clip via proxy, mm -hmm. and it'll come back off a of tape, and maybe take them an, an extra you know, 30, 40% more time to get that, that clip into their local RAID storage and start working with it. So it's 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 gotta be tiered, otherwise we'd have uh, 10 petabytes of spinning disk. Which is crazy, yeah. which is crazy. Um, there's lots of competition all the time, obviously. I mean, you're having to do more and more all the time, mm -hmm. and you're not necessarily hiring more people, from right. what I understand. So how do you get, to, how do you handle that? I mean, how do you, can you, how do, you do more with less? Um, you have to add people incrementally to support the systems, because don't forget they're basically supercomputers. Okay. But the bottom line was, and, and, and I'm on a committee that's actually talking about how do we share the information, lessons learned on our end. Right. Um, there's not really, and we were kind of struggling with, with the, the term ROI, or, or return on investment. How do sure. you go from linear tape to nonlinear editing and storage area network platforms, core servers per se. Right. And the point is, is that you're saving operating expenses with people, tape machines, and tape. So over time, you automate as many workflows as you can, and once you're file-based, you really don't have to have the, the ridiculously sized library staff pulling tapes running around. Right now, we because we do do res restoration from uh, uh, computer tapes, LTO4 in our case, not, not E-level. Right. Uh, we do have people in our media management department, but it's six, seven, not 17. I mean, you do save money from an operating expense standpoint, standpoint when you do get off of tape and on to, to file-based workflows. Right, right, gotcha, gotcha. Uh, another subject that we're hearing a lot about this show is IP. Mm -hmm. You know, IP delivery, IP production. I know you guys do things like the in look-ins, live look-ins, that kind of stuff, which is all remotely controlled right. from New Jersey, which is very cool. How reliable is this stuff? And how, first of all, how is it easy to deploy, and then how reliable is it? Very difficult to deploy. You've got to be smart about it. Okay. Um, we're in th all 30 ballparks, right. every major league. Uh, and it really ballpark. works, by the way. I've seen it, and it really looks, it looks very good. Yeah, I mean, we're proud. It was it was uh, nominated for uh, George Wenzel Award, who's an old dear friend of mine who passed away, and they, they put an, uh, the Emmy committee put a put a, um, an award out in his name. He's he was something. So, you know, when you're nominated for the award with his name on it, it's pretty cool. Um, yeah. Both our Diamond MAM system, okay, and Ballpark Cam, which you're referring to now, um, have been nominated. Haven't won. That's okay. Yeah. Being nominated, you know, from your You're not bitter. No, not at all. <laughs> we, we've, we've won our share of Emmys, but, but right. the point is is that, you know, it, it's, it's a point of honor. So right. basically we're, we're OC3 connected from every stadium, goes into a, a central office or a pop, point of presence. Sure. And uh, then we have a, a, a big pipe coming into us, and it's all live IP streams using um, MPEG-4, 2.2, ABC, 
Okay. Uh, right now we went from three, lower the bandwidth to four streams from every park. So we'll bring, it's basically content gathering. Sure. We have a uh, VoIP intercom You're systems. also doing remote control though also. Yeah, cameras. we've got two robotic cameras yeah. in every park and that's over an IP layer. And we changed our multi-viewer out to a different system where it's one and a half megabit. Instead of taking a full-blown streaming spot, right. we now have four. We used to have three in a multi-viewer. Now we've got four in a multi-viewer. Okay. So it rides on the side of the pipe. You know, and OC, gotcha. OC3 is pretty big. So we're getting, uh, you know, we can go look at any park we want, really the drop of a hat, as long as we've got it routed. Great, but then a reliability, are you finding drop packets, things like that? Anything? No, not, not with how we're doing it. There are times that networks will go down mm -hmm. or will burp, yep. but... Is that inherent because of IP, do you think, or is it something else? It's inherent just because of the nature. It's almost like physical. Okay. In other words, I, I really think, and don't forget, last mile providers are going to be Lex. They're not going to be... Right. You know, we use HTN now, switch HTN for our, our content delivery from the parks. Okay. Um, we also work with Baseball Advanced Media, or more commonly known as MLB.com. And that's the online stuff. And, well, they're harvesting games too, so if they have a problem with their network, they, they can immediately grab our content on a stream, oh, and vice versa. Cool. We back each other up. That's cool, yeah. Okay, great. Um, as far as, you know, um, another subject, you know, 4K is a big thing on the show. Production, obviously, we, we see it makes sense, but distribution, not so much so. Um, wondering, you know, from a kind of, again, you run operations, mm -hmm. Does that mean you're going to have to redo everything in operation as far as distribution patents in-house? And yeah, it's what really, are you looking at? It's really the tale of two cities, to, to be cliche. Um, there's what you want to capture natively and work with as a production tool in right. a remote and a mobile unit. We we played with 4K at the World Baseball Classic right. in Arizona. For slow-mo, right? Yeah, and I'll, I can get into that. And then when it comes to capture and send out to, to the world, I mean, HEVC isn't even ready yet. They haven't defined the standard. They defined the standard for... for transmission to the home right. to save the bandwidth on that end, which is where they always should start. They have not yet come up with a standard to use it, but, but HEVC and 4K are going to be going hand in hand. Okay. Because you know, you've got you've got to not gobble up the bandwidth you've got. So you've got to take existing infrastructure from a bandwidth standpoint right. and make it work for Ultra HD, as, as it were. And I, whether we skip 4K and go to 8K, I don't know. Um, but it is kind of cool. I, I think that, that people have a hard time understanding the value. The value is you you are now going to be able to get closer to your TV or buy a bigger TV. You see, so you they talk about your field it's of view. recommended viewing at five five feet or whatnot. Yeah, instead of nine feet on a on a, on a forty two inch, right. you're now going to be nine feet on an eighty inch. Okay. Because you you know you'll walk up to a, a flat screen in whether it's seven twenty p ten eighty i or or flipped in your box, which they do at my house. Right. On the seven twenty p, I spit ten eighty i. Yep. When I get within two or three feet, I can see stuff. Right. That's not supposed to be there. Whether it's banding because of bit rate or it's it's tiling. So that's what 4K is going to give us. Is that a big enough leap for the consumers to keep up? I don't know. Right. As far as a production tool though, right. my prediction is pretty much, and I can't put a number of years on it, two or three years, every camera on a mobile unit is going to be 4K or really? 8K. They'll have a connector and on the back of the camera. It Well, it depends. More than one. Okay. It'll be four or two depending if they're using data stream or, sure. uh, or 3G. But What's going to happen is that your traditional tape operators right. are also going to be able to zoom in. Right now, it's a standalone, one-off, right. where you're able to zoom and track and, and see high resolution. It's basically Mike Davis said it the best. It's it's revisionist camera work. Show me everything. After the fact, we'll go into what matters. And and it it was it was an interesting way that. That is put interesting. It. But does that mean like less camera operators? We're talking about remote cameras then, and uh, not necessarily less. I mean, because directors want ninety when you get right. fifty. Right. So. No, I don't think so. I think it's, and, and Mike, all, Mike Davis, I got to give him credit for these thoughts. Uh, with Who Fox is Mike Sports. Davis? Just so people know. Mike's uh, a VP at Fox Sports, remote Good. operations, works with Jerry Steinberg. I used to work with him, he's a smart guy. Good. He's saying maybe the smaller things, the college productions, you're going to have three or four of these cameras, and you're going to do the camera work after the fact. Really? So it may go out to your network or wherever, whoever's producing it, Right. five minutes later, but you'll be doing the camera work. It'll, you'll lock everything off. It'll be low operating expense. But how do you how do you resolution. do a live game like that? I mean, is it's it live, not live then? Live. It's, it's not live, live exactly. It's TiVo to a degree. <laughs> and you use the, the TiVo. You use the the store the storing and the zooming. Yeah, caching to the box on the TV. Out later. It right. was a, it was a smart application. We're, we used it at the World Baseball Classic. Baseball's lucky. I don't have to worry about a hundred yards of sideline. I have to worry right. about four bases for the most part. Right. So you you, you basically get a nice head to toe. Mm -hmm. Look at the bag, go to the glove, the ball's not in the glove, he's safe. It's kind of cool. Cool. And, and, 
to have that native resolution where you can zoom into 500% of, of normal and still maintain something between a, a standard SD and HD quality. It's neat. So it's just what you're saying is that his head of operations, 4K doesn't scare you about the cost of 4K. It's a production way. tool and it's a great one. Yeah. I mean, Fox deserves all the credit, um, as Ken Agard's also doing a bunch of stuff yep. with it. Uh, Tom Sahara right now at, uh, yep, sure. is doing the, final, is doing the final four with it. It's a great production tool, it really is. And you're always looking for higher, you just mentioned 8K, you're always looking for higher resolution. Oh, well, NHK has already skipped 4K, but they're, they've always right. been the cutting edge. Is that uh, where you're looking to get to? I mean, we'll see. Where does it I end, think I four, mean? I think 4K will work. Yeah, I mean, of course. Fox first started doing it 2K. Right, and, and then that looked great, Then by they the got way. 4K, yeah. And right. So, from production tool to tell the story, right? It's not quite the down and distance line, but it's it's way up there in terms of an innovation. I think it's great. great. Uh, the dirty word, 3D TV. Is that still on your radar? Are you still doing anything with it? I know you did some stuff with it. We dabbled with it. Right. We worked with, with Panasonic, with uh, IceK, who's their their CTO. Um, we did our what we call diamond demos. We have a lot of ex major league baseball players on our our talent staff. Yep. <coughs> Excuse me. And and. So we would do stuff there with a steady cam, real simple, real short form content. Because people were doing games, well that's two, three hours. Right. We said, well, don't you need 3D interstitials? So we, st we produced a bunch of stuff for them as a demo, and it kind of went nowhere. Uh, Why I, do you think it went I'm nowhere? I'm disappointed. I don't think the average consumer has the palate to put glasses on or... So it wasn't a technical thing? No. Uh, 4K is going to help 3D. Someone else said that at the sports video group. Um, and I, Love to give credit to who was that. It's really, because my opinion is that 4K is going to make 3D like obsolete almost. It's they're immersive, they're and then 8K is even more immersive. They're completely different because right now, because you've got a left eye, right eye. Right. If you're not spitting 3G, you know, basically you're going to be able to spit 3G left eye and right eye. You won't get the dimming, you'll get the higher resolution. So it'll be actually be more immersive okay. with higher resolution. I, I, I'm not a, a kind of, I think 3D has its place, and okay. it's always going to have its place, especially in feature. Films. Gotcha. Last question, any kind of futurist technology you're saying that's going to be cool someday? We've only dipped our toe in audio. Okay. It's still... And you're doing 5.1 right no, now. No, we're ready to. Oh, okay, <clears throat> okay. I, I want, when, I want to, when I do it, I want to not slow our workflows down. <clears throat> so we're dipping our toe in that and other things. Right. We're trying to get more immersive with, um, and I've got a lot of meetings here with different audio geniuses per se. Right. Um, to try to get, to hear more that's appropriate. I can put mics everywhere and open them all up. Right. When you're watching TV and you're hearing stuff you're not seeing. You've got to hear what you're seeing. Gotcha. And hear it like you've never heard That's it before. That's a good point. And then worry about profanity because <laughs> they don't swear in baseball. <laughs> Great. Thank you, Mark. I appreciate it. You're welcome, it. Michael.